Hello everyone, welcome to valuetrainings.com. So now we'll be discussing the requirements of building the data-driven framework. Now first of all, you should be able to read the data from the Excel file or the configuration file. Now look, there are two types of data. The one type of data is one which changes frequently over a period of time. And the another type of data is one which never changes or if a change happens, it happens after a very long time. So, for example, the regular data of your website, for example, the username and password of your account or your regular testing data, which frequently changes. And then there is the data, say like uh, the URL of the website or the title of the web page, the data that might change over a period of time, but not every time. Right. So we have got two sets of data with us. The data which changes very frequently is kept in the Excel file or the XML file. And the another type of data is kept in the configuration file. Alright. So in this framework, we have to make provisions for both of them. Say for example, I have this data with me. Uh, for this framework, I have taken three to four test cases over here and arranged the data like this. And every set of data has the run mode column associated with it, which signifies whether the test has to be executed with certain set of data or not. For example, this login test has two different sets of data, but it will be executed only once with the first set of data since the run mode for the another set of data is set to a no, as we all can see over here. All right, so I have taken the Zoho.com website and built the framework. And then now if I look into my project, the second set of data comes from the configuration file, where I have kept the URL of my website, the environment I want to run my project on. That is, if the environment is the production environment, then we have different login credentials. Or if else the environment is the URA, UAT environment, then we have different login credentials to login into the account. Then a grid run is set to no. That means I don't want to run my project on grid. If I make it to a yes, say suppose, then the same framework will run on the grid as well. So with just minimum changes, we can put up the maximum output. All right, and then we have the various locators with us, the XPaths, IDs and all everything in this configuration file. Then we can also keep the title of the web page, the static text, which has to be changed. Everything we can just keep in the uh, configuration file and then say, suppose the uh, Excel path, the file, the Excel file path as well in the configuration file, the report folder, the Chrome driver.exe file path, the IE driver.exe file path. So the various things we can just keep it over here inside this configuration of file. All right. And then we have to implement the various test cases and do the validations and all everything in this framework. We'll do that as well. And then comes the report generation. Now there are two types of reports, the XSLT reports and the extent reports. Extent reports are more famous these days. We'll give you an example. Uh, say for example, I'll just open up uh, one uh, extent report. So every time you run your project, new report will, will be generated based on the timestamp. So for example, out here you can see that these are the various test cases that have been executed. The, as you can see, the create lead test is executed four times. One is passing and the another, th uh, another three are being skipped. And then we have the login test, one is passing and the another is skipped. Then some of the test cases are failing as well. And if you look into, if you click on any, any test case, we can see the logs as well that what happened at what point of time. That is, it says that it is first of all opening the Mozilla browser, then navigating to the URL, then trying to log in with the username and password, clicking on the login button. So everything we have seen with the help of the logs. And then say, suppose if some test case is failing, then in the end, we have even embedded the screenshot as well of the error message. All right. Okay, so this is a very good report. And then you can even switch over to a more clear view as well of the extent report. 
which is more presentable and then if you look into your dashboard which which will give you the uh, diagrammatic representation of the test cases along with the description as well the time stamp when the test cases started when the test cases ended up so we can see everything over here in this extent reports all right and then moreover we have one more type of report that is the XSLT reports out here as you can see this is the example of the XSLT report which is not very effective but we can use this as well in the XSLT reports we don't have the detailed description of every test case all right and then screenshot embedding is also not easy is not as easy as in the extent reports the extent reports are more better but we have she we have shown how to build both the reports in the uh, framework all right and then also putting the logs in the reports and the screenshots as well will cover everything in the framework and then implementing the project on the grid running the test cases parallelly on multiple machines we'll also see that as well all right say for example if you look into your project we have different configuration files over here the grid.txt file the hub.json file and two node 1 and node 2.json file so i have created a one hub and two nodes are connected to this single hub two nodes means the two pcs are connected to the hub which is known as the main machine and to which we connect other machines which are known as the nodes so we'll see how to run the test cases parallelly on the grid and these are the configuration files that we need to include in our project in order to implement the grid in our framework. So we'll do everything uh, as we go with our framework. Okay, and then reusability and flexibility and implementing the test cases is very important. You should have the reusable component in your framework. You should not repeat the code. So we'll use the inheritance and then we have the base test class as well, which contains lot of reusable functions inside it all right so flexibility should be there in your framework for example if something changes tomorrow in the application say suppose if we take the example of the experts only the experts might change tomorrow so that is why we keep all the experts in the configuration file at a common location you can put all the variable things like the experts and all so that what happens is that other test cases which have been executed which you have executed all the test cases they can just read the experts ids and all from this common uh, common configuration file so if a change happens tomorrow we'll just have to change in this configuration file which really becomes easy for us all right say for example if you have to change the path of your excel file or the report folder file path then you can just make the changes in this configuration file okay and then we have to like you should be able to run your project on different environments that we have set in the configuration file that is according to your environment we have different logging credentials okay and then we have to integrate the project with the jenkins and how can you schedule your project schedule your test cases with the help of the jenkins that is a very important so well, we have integrated this framework with jenkins and shown it as well and then you can even schedule the test cases so suppose if you want to run your project every day or every month then how it can be done we'll see that also and then emailing the reports again very important after the script has been executed the reports are generated you want to email it to all the team members so for that we have the sendmail.cs class file which will send an email to all the team members all right and then in the end your code should be easy to change because if you are actually having changes in the real website then it should not be like that that it, it cannot change the code easily or taking a lot of time to make the changes in your code so that is why we build the core framework first this framework is such a way that it can be integrated with any website so firstly we will build the core framework which will be having all the features inside it uh, like initializing the configuration file building the validation functions in the base test class building the reusable functions generating the reports reading the data from the excel file optionally running the test cases building the utility functions everything will be there inside this core framework and then you can integrate it with any website like i have taken the zoho.com website so if you have a project then you can integrate with that particular project in this framework. 
So this is how we will be making the data-driven framework.